The cosmic waters are a mythological motif representing a time when the world was enveloped by a vast primordial ocean, as found in many creation myths. The cosmic ocean existed before the creation of Earth. It's said that from the abyss of the primordial waters, the entire cosmos arose. The cosmic ocean takes form in mythos from the ancient Egyptians, Greeks, Indians, Persians, and even the Sumerians. In Asia and North America, the Earth Diver myth is found. In this myth, a creator god dives into the cosmic ocean to bring up Earth in order to form new continents. The concept of chaotic waters can be seen through the great floods mentioned in many religions that is followed by an emergence of Earth. The cosmic ocean represented as unordered or dangerous. The transformation of chaos into order represented as the shift of water into land. In many ancient myths, the ocean and chaos are equivalent and inseparable from each other. The idea that Earth or life came from a chaotic abyss can still be found in current day as the theory of black hole cosmology. In its simplest form, this theory states that our universe might have originated from a black hole that lies within another universe. This theory centers on how matter and energy falling into a black hole could, in theory, come out of a white hole in another universe. In such a situation, both the black hole and the white hole are both mouths of the Einstein-Rosen bridge, popularly known as a wormhole, meaning the Big Bang could have been a supermassive white hole that was a result of a supermassive black hole at the heart of a galaxy in our parent universe. A black hole forms upon the collapse of a massive dying star, the gravitational collapse of its compacted mass triggering its formation. A black hole is a place where gravity has gotten so strong that its escape velocity is faster than light itself. The strength of its gravity is due to its compacted mass. When our cosmos was incredibly young, it underwent a period of incredibly rapid expansion, known as inflation. When inflation ended and the universe began to cool off, it was not a smooth and gentle process. Instead, it was incredibly violent, with massive shifts in energy and mass from place to place. It's possible that pockets of the universe may have spontaneously reached high enough densities to form black holes directly on their own, without having to go through the formation of stars first. These are the so-called primordial black holes. Within Elden Ring, there is the primeval current, an infinite source of energy that leads to the creation of stars within the universe, and the origin of glenstone sorcery. There are many spells that relate to space phenomena, as the founders of sorcery were the astrologers, an ancient race that once gazed up the stars from the mountaintops of the giants. Out of the four legendary sorceries, three of them are related to the primeval current. The conspectus of the primeval current is forbidden knowledge within the Raya Lucaria Academy, even in Celia, a location where it is a common place for assassin sorcerers to hunt one another, it is still forbidden, as we find Lustat imprisoned in the Celia hideaway for his continued obsession with the current. Using legendary sorceries related to the current requires a higher intelligence. To gain additional intelligence, the Tarnish can utilize the power of the Glenstone crowns. To wear a crown is the first step in becoming one with the Glenstone. As Lustat was said to have reached a near inorganic state as he journeyed deeper into the understanding of the origin of the Glenstone from its source. Selen mentions that Lustat is almost a child of the stars due to the Glenstone crystallizing onto his body. Glintstone can be seen growing off of organic material in the lands between, such as with crystal cave moss or glintstone fireflies. The crowns that feature their eyes open are replaced instead with glintstones. Eyes are seen in many cultures as the gateway to the mind. Selen mentions that she wants glintstone sorceries that open our minds. Azor and Lestat's glintstone crowns are in fact their brains and skulls, which have been crystallized from witnessing the primeval current firsthand. The eyes of the witch's glintstone crown are closed. Interestingly, other sorcerer's helms rely on cloths to blindfold them to witnessing the primeval current, but the witch seems to have enough willpower to keep her eyes closed without aid. While most of the glintstone crowns exhibit stern facial expressions, the witch appears to be smirking. Why? Sorcerer Selen, an apprentice of Azor, experiments with the primeval current to gain a deeper understanding of glintstone sorcery and to rejoin with the stars above. As she mentions, she is a fallen child of the stars. Selen is labeled by the Academy as an apostate for her refusal to accept the views of the Lazuli Conspectus and for her continued practice of the primeval current, resulting in the deaths of many scholars as they're collected into the school of graven mages. Selen is labeled by witch hunter Jaren as a graven witch for her continued experimentation she conducts on others. 
A school of graven mages occurs when a group of scholars are absorbed into a single, spherical form, a forbidden practice within the academy, labeled by some as a terrestrial taboo. We find these objects in locations that are connected to the practice of the primeval current. The talisman affiliated with the school of graven mages provides a boost to the user's magical abilities, meaning that these creations could theoretically be used as a type of battery to charge up spells to achieve more powerful sorceries. These spheres are a compact mass of energy and stone, similar to a star. This may be why they're called seeds of stars. With consideration of the black hole cosmology, the extreme density of a dying star could have resulted in the birth of a new universe, so the dying star symbolically acts as a seed in which new life emerges from. Side note, a quick online search of seeds of stars will lead you to a new age belief that refers to an alternative spiritual practice developed in the 1970s. The idea is largely accredited to author Brad Steiger, who in his book, Gods of Aquarius, introduced his notion that some people originate from other dimensions. Individuals that subscribe to this notion believe they have come to Earth from other dimensions in order to help the planet and guide humanity into the quote, golden age, a period of great happiness, prosperity, and achievement. Starseeds also believe they can communicate in quote, light language, a form of communication that is said to bypass human limitations and be the language of the soul. Believers also say that starseeds have the desire to explore and experience new cultures and spheres, which help star people to then provide novel insights into their existence. The Graven Mass Talisman, a talisman depicting the first school of graven mages. The term mass here refers to both the mass amount of scholars used for the creation of the seed of stars, as well as the gravitational pull that occurred to generate the object's dense form. Black holes form when massive stars collapse and squeeze all of their mass into an impossibly small point with infinite density, known as singularity. That much mass in such a small amount of space leads to a gravitational field so strong that once you've gotten close enough and passed the point of no return, known as the event horizon, you'd have to go faster than the speed of light to escape, which is currently impossible, so you're stuck. Just as it appears that the transformation into a school of graven mages is at a permanent state of alteration, a one-way trip. Speaking of the event horizon being a boundary at which nothing inside can escape, reminded me of the spell Eternal Darkness, found near Celia, town of sorcery. This spell creates a space of darkness that draws in other sorceries. As you can see, all light is sucked into the vacuum created by the spell. Onyx and Alabaster Lords are an ancient race with skin of stone that descended from a great meteor. Young Radon studied his gravitational techniques under an Alabaster Lord, as these humanoids were masters of gravity magic, and their manipulation over gravitational forces reminded me yet again of a black hole. Interestingly, these Lords have an ability of controlling voids of space. They are seen materializing out of this void, as well as using the void to summon meteorites. The voids they use emit purplish sparks of gravity magic. Within the real world, this reflects what is known as a charged black hole, which is a black hole that possesses an electrical charge. Fun fact, within Eastern media, gravity is often visually depicted by the color purple. Purple is viewed by some as a space color, despite outer space being a void, which we see as darkness, or the color black. In Western media, gravity tends to have a more diverse coloring, with purple occasionally showing up as well. Black holes are often depicted with purplish tints. Here are a few examples. As mentioned, the study of the primeval current allows the caster to harness immense power in order to fuel new incredible sorceries, as well as exercise a form of reincarnation with the use of a sorcerer's primal glintstone. The current itself has been observed by the exiled grandmasters Azur and Lestat. Azur witnessed a void, described as a fear-inducing darkness, while Lestat saw the final moments of a great star cluster. Remember, a great star collapses onto itself, so a black hole can form. After being exiled from the academy, Azur is found residing on the edge of the Hermit Village. As mentioned, when he witnessed the primeval current, he saw an abyss of darkness. Peering into the current gave him the insight needed to master the Carlos Conspectus, allowing for the creation of the legendary spell Comet Azur. The spell casts a tremendous comet in a torrent a comet is a ball of ice and dust that orbits the sun. Yet, the appearance of this spell looks like another celestial event, called a quasar. Quasars are the universe's brightest and most powerful objects, ignited by galaxy collisions. When two galaxies collide, 
gravitational forces push huge amounts of gas and matter towards supermassive black holes, triggering it to release extraordinary amounts of energy in the form of radiation, resulting in the characteristic quasar brilliance. Quasars have the same luminosity of a trillion stars contained in space about the size of our solar system. Essentially, they're torrents of powerful energy blasted out of an abyss, similar to that of the comet Azor. In closing, the primeval current is the origin of glintstone sorcery and an extremely powerful source of creation, described by those who witnessed it as the final moments of a great star cluster and as a void of darkness. Similarly, a black hole is created from the death of a great star, and due to its event horizon, no light can escape it. They're fundamentally unseeable, although visual representations of black holes display a void of darkness within a disk of light. Those that seek out the primeval current create seeds of stars to further their pursuit of knowledge. These seeds are scholars that have been fused together in extremely dense spherical shapes. This reflects how a star's mass compresses onto itself during death to create a black hole. The visuals and attributes of spells such as Comet Azur, Stars of Ruin, and Eternal Darkness resemble real-world space phenomena, such as quasars, meteor showers, and black holes respectively. The primeval current seems to share a resemblance to the black hole cosmological model, which is a theorized attempt at understanding the origins of our universe, just as the primeval current is an attempt at understanding the origins of glimstone, the vitality of the stars. Thank you very much for joining me today, and I hope you have a wonderful week.